In this project, we're going to walk through building a RStudio cluster in Azure. This cluster is deployed using infrastructure's code and provides a fully automated, scalable RStudio environment in the cloud. This project builds directly on the mini AD Active Directory project we created earlier. I'll put it up there. We have a Samba-based domain controller providing authentication, and we also have an integrated Azure files for shared storage across the cluster. With Terraform, we provision not only the directory and networking services, but also a cluster of RStudio servers that run inside a virtual machine scale set with an application gateway. Packer is used to build a custom Linux image that includes RStudio server, the R runtime, and essential system libraries required for compiling R packages. This includes a Fortran compiler, a C++ compiler, a C compiler, and make, etc. The scale set continuously monitors load, and when an average CPU utilization rises above 60%, it automatically adds additional RStudio servers to ensure consistent performance and availability for users. The cluster design ensures that users can log in with their Active Directory credentials, get seamless access to both personal home directories and shared R package libraries on Azure files, and work in an environment that feels like a single unified RStudio server, even though it's powered by multiple servers. By the end of this project, you'll see how these pieces fit together, Active Directory for identity, Azure files for shared libraries and data, Packer for custom builds, and Terraform for orchestration. Together, they create a robust, reproducible platform for our studio server running in Azure. Now let's take a look at the architecture diagram of what we're going to build. We are in the US central region in Azure Cloud. And the first thing we do is we provision a virtual network, the ADV net. And in that virtual network, we're going to have four subnets that we provision. The first subnet is for the mini AD controller. We put that in its own controller. We have a module that you can reuse in your own projects. The second subnet is the VM subnet. And that's where we deploy the Windows AD box for managing users and the NFS gateway box, which presents the Azure files on the Windows side as Samba links. And then finally, in this subnet, we're gonna have the RStudio server virtual machine scale set. Now, both the VM subnet and the mini AD subnet are private. They're fully private. They have a NAT gateway. There's no inbound access. Then the last two subnets that we have is first the Bastion subnet. When we go to debug things, log in to the AD box to add a user. We're going to do that in the demo. We will use the Bastion host. And then the second thing that's public is we have an application gateway. It has to have its own uh, subnet. This is where it provides the URL that allows you to access the virtual machine scale sets. Um, and we'll have an HTTP link to that gateway. So that's all the network. Outside of the VNet, we've got the Key Vault. In the Key Vault, we provision all the user accounts with randomized credentials. And then we also have a storage account, which is the back end for the NFS storage for Azure files. We drop it into the VM subnet with a network card. And then we're able to access the storage account that way. Now let's talk about the prerequisites. Uh, put up at the top, we have this video, which is the Azure and Terraform Easy Setup. It walks you through how you create the build identity necessary and all the UIDs you have to extract for an actual build. And so the four things that we're gonna need here, we need that Azure account. And in that Azure account, it needs to be pay as you go. And you need to have that build identity. So watch that video for that. Then you need to have the AZ CLI. We use that as the glue between the, the different phases of the build. Then you have to have the latest version of Terraform to actually run the Terraform code. And then you need the latest version of Packer to run the Packer code. Now let's talk about the, the build process. There's four phases to this build. It's a little more complicated than some of our other projects. So we'll walk through the stages of the build. The first thing, uh, the entry point is applied as H. And the first thing we do is phase one. That's where we're gonna deploy the mini AD and, and um, the networking associated with the project. It's in the zero one directory folder this runs creates everything in its own resource group then we go to phase two phase two is that's where we deploy the standalone vms that are part of the system that is the nfs gateway we also deploy the nfs files in this stage and then finally the windows admin ad box so that's done in the 02 server folder and that's all done in terraform the next phase is the packer build now the packer build takes Quite a bit of time because we install a lot of things necessary for installing and, and compiling our packages. So it takes about 10-15 minutes to build the image. It's, it's pure Packer. It's going to use an Ubuntu 24.04 image. It's going to install R, all the support packages, 
and this is in the 03 packer. Most of this is just packer code. Then the final build is we're going to take that packer image that we created and we're going to deploy the application gateway in the v virtual machine scale set. This is in 04 cluster part and this is the final phase and we end up at the end with a application gateway URL that you can hit. You'll log into your um, our studio sessions with your Active Directory credentials. Now let's build the code. The first thing you want to do is copy this git clone command and go to your development environment. I'm using Ubuntu as my development environment. I'm going to paste into here and I have downloaded code and switched to the, the proper directory. Now, the first thing you want to do in all our projects is run this script called check ENV. And check ENV is going to go through and make sure that you have all everything we talked about in the prerequisites installed, AZ, Terraform, Packer. Then we also verify that you have the, the EID uh, are set and your environment variables for actually making a connection to Azure. Then we go ahead and log in and confirm. So now we are ready to run the build. Uh, now the build takes approximately 40 minutes to run and uh, if you have any questions about the build or the project in general feel free to put it in the comment sections below and i will answer them the build has completed so now what we want to do is bring up the azure console and let's take a look at what got built so in the console the first thing we do is go to resource groups now, in this project, we have quite a number of components. So what I ended up doing is splitting up the project into four uh, resource groups. The fourth resource group is the mini AD resource group. Uh, this is created by the module itself. And this has the uh, all, everything necessary for the mini AD module, the DC controller, uh, disk network card, and of course, the network security group that has all the ports open. The next resource group is the network resource group. And here's where I put most of the networking in the AD key vault. So if you click in here and click on subnets, you'll see all the subnets that we articulated in the architecture diagram have been built. Then we have the uh, key vault and the key vault is gonna contain all the randomized credentials that get created that we'll use during the demo. The next group is the servers group. And in the servers group, this is where we deploy the NFS file system, the NFS storage bucket, and then we provision the Windows AD box that we'll use for managing users. And then we'll also provision the NFS gateway box where we mount the NFS storage and then present that storage to the Windows side for a Samba server. So those are the two servers in the diagram and the VM subnet. The final resource group is in the, the virtual machine scale sets. This handles everything associated with the, the cluster. We have the virtual machine image that we create for the RStudio. That's where we do the install with Packer. Then we have virtual machine scale set and then everything associated with the RStudio app gateway. And that actually will give us the you know, URL that we'll use at the end. Now let's drill down into the RStudio cluster's virtual machine scale set. So we'll click on that. We'll go to, it says two of two succeeded. We'll click on instances and you'll see we've got two instances active in our cluster serving the traffic and it, it's healthy. There's a health check. It's on port 8787. In fact, I'll go down here and look health and repair. And you can see this is where you have the health check to find on 8787. And that is the default port for our studio. And then it has the, the various settings for the health check. The next we're going to look at is the scaling policy. So if you look at scaling, you will see that we have a, a minimum of one instance, a maximum of four, and a default of two. We also have a scale out rule so that if the average CPU gets above 60% for the cluster, it'll keep adding VMs until you reach four instances. So those are the four resource groups for this project. Okay, for the demo, the first thing you want to do is you want to run the validate script. The validate script is going to verify that the application gateway is there and responding, and then we'll dump out the uh, URL for the application gateway for the RStudio application. So I'm going to grab this, copy that, I'm going to go back to my browser, open up a new tab, and put it in there, and you should get the login for RStudio. 
So what we want to do at this point is go back to our key vaults and we're going to log in as John Smith. So I'm going to log in to John Smith. So I go to the credentials manager. That is the password for John Smith. So I'm going to copy that. Go into the RStudio login, say J Smith. Okay, I've logged in to RStudio with John Smith. And I'm going to go to Terminal, and I'm going to say ID. And these are the UID, GID numbers associated with this user. And when we, this will make more sense when we do the Add a New User section. But I want, what I highlighted is that this user, John Smith, is a member of RStudio Admin. So this is going to be important for when we actually do install packages. So uh, let's go to the NFS file system. This is a shared file system. And I have some sample programs. So let's go to our samples. And let's start with the cowboy hat. So I go in there and I submit that. And we get the cowboy hat. Uh, there's a several other plots in here. There's the um, volcano plot um, that I like. And then you've got the walk simulation, which generates synthetic data and graphs it. Every time you run it, the data is different. So those are a couple of our programs, pretty basic stuff. Uh, now let's talk about the our packages. So what we set it up is we have this directory. If I go back to files and go to NFS, we have our lives. And in our lives, that's where you can go and install packages for all users. Now, when you install a package, it takes a while to compile. Uh, and so any user can install a package into their home directory, but if you want to pre-compile it for all users, then you need to be a member of the RStudio admins group. And from there, that will allow you to install packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the code here, and I've got this line here that says, hey, install GSL into NFS RLives. Let's run that. And you can see it downloads the code, and now it's going to compile it. Okay, so the compile finished. It takes a, f a few minutes to compile. And what you end up with is if you go into the RLibs directory, you can see this is now installed for all users. Now there's something called LibPass. If I do LibPass, it's gonna show you the different ones. Everybody can install in their home directory. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up creating a new user and not put it in the RStudio admins. And we'll do the same exercise and see what happens. Now we're ready to create a new user. So what we want to do is I'm just going to log out as John Smith and I'm going to go to the servers group and we're going to do everything in Bastion because none of these instances are public. So I'm going to go back to my Windows server and I'm going to click on that and it's going to say connect via Bastion. I'm going to go back to my key vault and again I'm going to do John Smith. So I'm going to copy the user ID here, John Smith, and then the password, and then hit connect. Okay, now that we logged in as John Smith, what we want to do is uh, first we're going to create a new user. So we need to get the next UID number. And so there's a, a script here that we've deployed. So if I go to this computer, you'll see the Z drive is the NFS gateway, and that's where we have everything deployed. So everything that you saw in our studio you will see in here. So you have the edit closer, data home. So where we install GSL, that's shown on the Z drive. And so what I'm going to do is there is a utils directory. And I'm going to click on get next UID. I run. It's going to come back and say your next UID is 10,005. So keep that in mind. And so what we want to do is create a new user. So I'm going to go into here and say Windows Administrative Tools. Then I'm going to go to Active Directory Users and Groups. And the first thing I want to do is I want to say View Advanced Features. This will allow us to set our UID GID numbers. So let's go into here, say New User. And I'm going to say Mike Cloud M Cloud. That'll be the user ID. Hit Next. 
And I'm going to say, I'm just going to put a password here. Put whatever password you want. It finished. So that's the first part. You need to go find that user. It's right here. I'm going to do uh, properties. And now we need to set all those UID, GID numbers in the attribute editor. So I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to go to a GID number. And I'm going to set it to 10,001. 10,001 is the RStudio users group number. So I'm hitting there. And then I'm going to go down to here and I'm going to say UID is going to be mCloud. Then my UID number, remember it said 10,005, so I'm going to 10,005. Okay, so we apply that, hit OK. Now we need to add a couple of groups. So I'm going to go with a member of, and I'm going to say add, and I'll put it in, uh, put mCloud in the US group. So it's in the US group. Then I want to put it in the RStudio users group. And so we've got those two there. It's in the RStudio users group. Hit apply. Okay. Now let's go back to that script you were looking at before. Run get next UID. Run. And you can say it's 10,006 because mCloud is now 10,005. Okay, now we're ready to test this account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Bastion environment. So I'm going to go to the NFS server here and click on here. Connect via Bastion. And I'm going to do in cloud and then I'm going to do the password I set all right so let's do ID and you can see 2005 we're in our studio users group and there's no our studio admins in here so we're not an admin so now I think we're ready to log in to our studio with this new user so go back to our studio login and I'm gonna say in cloud Put the password in. So let's go to a terminal here. Again, ID, just like we did before. And let's drill down into the samples, our lives. And let's do the wave service. I think this is the, oh yeah, it's, a model, it's kind of like a weird, a top hat. Um, so let's go back to files and we've got the, there's one in here that's like a, a chip. There we go. It's a, it's a Pringles chip is what I've been told. Okay. So that's it for, for this. So let's go to the packages R and that whole thing that we did earlier. Let's run this line. And it's going to say, hey, you're not writable. Would you install it in your personal library? So I'll say yes. And it's going to go and compile everything and then put it in my home directory. So if I go back to my home directory and go into R, and then you can see that I've installed that GSL package here instead of for all users. So as you can see, any user can install a package, but it's whether or not they can install it for all users and pre-compile it. And so RCU admins can run these packages and install them for all and not have people have to do a compile. If you're not a member of that group, you can still access the packages. It's just in your home directory. Okay, that's pretty much it for the demo. So we're going to log out of here. The only thing left to do is to be a good steward of our cloud accounts. And so let's go to our uh, account and we're going to run the destroy script. Destroy takes 20 to 25 minutes. Most of that is in the key vault and Bastion being destroyed. 